Hello, hello, and welcome back to episode number three. Uh, I'm not going to talk about episode number two and the stats because I don't, I don't have a clip. I haven't even posted it yet. Uh, so if you are here for episode three, uh, welcome. Glad that you stuck around for a little bit and see, see what's going to be for dinner. Okay, the McJones household. Um, with all that work that we had done on the last, the last episode with our butchery, uh, now I'm going to show you what that's going to look like as we move forward. So chicken pot pie. Awesome, right? It's, uh, it's, it's definitely one of my favorites, that comfort food. Um, you know, the weather outside is pretty much garbage across the country. It's either snowing where you live um, and or raining where I live on a constant basis. Mind you, I did get a pretty good sunrise this morning. Got a few good shots. Maybe I'll, I'll put in a couple of photos here for you to take a look at and swoon over, over looking at the mountains and, uh, and stuff like that. So I'm just going to get right to the chicken pot pie. I've already gone ahead and did a kind of small dice of our carrots, okay? Um, our celery and onions are gonna be next. I'll give you a quick quick, uh, quick chop chop on that one. Again, it's just gonna be, it, it, it doesn't need to be perfect. We're not working in a restaurant. Chef's not gonna get mad at you. Chances are chef at home isn't gonna care what your thoughts are, to be quite frank. Oh my God, that. That, that celery dice isn't perfect. In the kitchens at work, you get your hands wrapped on that pretty quick for sure. So carrot, celery, and onion. The other main ingredient on this one is gonna be peas. I always use frozen peas. Uh, we, all, we all know that peas are typically not in season year round, so they're tough to get. One of the great things about frozen vegetables, they're harvested and frozen at their peak. So they're the best quality it can possibly be. So I know there's a lot of people out there that think, oh, I can't, I can't possibly think of using frozen vegetables. Use them. They're delicious. They're at their prime. Chances are when you go to the grocery store, your vegetables aren't prime, right? They've been sitting on the back of a truck for who knows how long, coming from who knows where. But we know for sure that stuff's being frozen uh, right at harvest and chances are right on site. Okay, so don't be, don't be afraid. Whole chicken, right? We did that on our last episode. I'm gonna show you a couple quick tricks. There's two things really on this that I wanna, I wanna show you that's, that's kind of fun. Uh, other than that, we're just gonna blow past it because we're just gonna shred it, we're gonna dice it, and it's gonna go into, into our velouté that we're gonna make here in a minute. So I'll get to it right here. So all I do, run my thumbs right along that cue bone that we talked about before. Comes right off the bone, okay? Same with the other side. Comes right off. You can get your, your whole roasted chicken at the grocery store these days, okay? It's always something that we did in our household, generally around Thanksgiving and Christmas, wishbone throw it in the window, let it dry out. Uh, it takes a little bit for it to dry out, but that's okay, but it's always fun. And then the kids can, can battle it out. Uh, probably turn into a fist fight, turn into a screaming match without question. Uh, I, I know I did that, especially when I didn't win, but if I did win, I rubbed it in like a complete ass, okay? Anyway, that's going in the window. The next thing I'm gonna show you just on the back end of this is what we refer to as a, as a I always call it a scallop, but it's not a scallop, it's actually an oyster. So just on the back part of the chicken here, there's one on either side, they just fold right out. They kind of look like little cheeks. It's actually the most tender piece of the chicken. So in the kitchen, when we're doing 20 or 30 of these at a time, when they come out of the oven, because I was the chef and I got to make the rules, I ate all of them. I, I wouldn't share. There was no reason to share. I was the chef, right? So there's one, ah, uh, I didn't say. Kara's reaching out here trying to grab one and I said, I don't share. I don't share. Phenomenal. Okay, so we're just gonna finish up the prep here. I pulled the frozen peas out. They're thawing out, they're pretty well ready to go. I'm not gonna show you the rest of the chop chop and the cleanup. Uh, what I am gonna show you next is we're gonna put the velouté together. Welcome back. Uh, the nice part about this whole thing is you guys don't get to see the cleanup. Okay, I mentioned that in, in the first episode. 
Here's the thing that I didn't tell you about in the second episode, and I almost forgot until I saw the sink full of dishes. So 2021 has started off as a, in, an interesting year so far, right? Um, this is not a political show, so we're not, we're not going to get into, into all that stuff. However, my dishwasher shit the bed. Done. Finished. Remember in episode one when I said, I don't have dishwashers, I don't have apprentices? It's me. Because I can't rightfully say to Kara, am I doing all the dishes for me? No, definitely not going to go over very well. So anyway, chicken's all diced up. Everything looks great. Same sizes. We're going to start putting our, our pot pie together. The inside part, we're going to get to the pastry in a couple minutes, which I hate making pastry. I cheated. Yeah, absolutely. We bought some prepackaged stuff. It is gluten-free. Mentioned that in season one or episode one as well. So we're going to come over here to the stove. We're going to make what's called a veloute. We're going to start with our roux, equal parts butter as well as flour. Okay. So my butter is already warming up. I'm going to start adding in some of my veg. Okay. So just sweat off the onions to start with. Always start with your onions. Start leaching out some of the oils and some of those flavors. We're going to get them so they're translucent, so they're see-through. Okay. There's also different ways that you can do this, but really at the end of the day, you're going to end up with the same product. You can put the rest of your, your celery and carrots in right now uh, and have them working, working in the butter. Or you do your roux, start making your velouté and your sauce, and then you put your carrots and celery in. I prefer putting them in now because I, I really don't think there's a huge, huge difference between the two. So, again, pottery. Keep talking about it every episode. Clay Kitchen Brigade, check it out on Facebook. Okay, so now we've got our carrot, celery, and onion are in. Get them sauteing. Just a small amount of, well, there's a good amount of butter in here, let's be honest. Okay, and if you want, you can put in comments on underneath. Why am I not using measurements? Because I don't use measurements. It always works out. I suppose if I was doing a recipe, if I was doing costing for the restaurant, I'd know exactly what's in each one. And trust me, when it comes to the apprentices and the young cooks, I'm going to bust their chops if they're not measuring. Okay. Again, we're cooking at home. We're not really into the whole restaurant scene right now. Um, so we're just going to, we're just going to keep doing, having some fun. So just sweating everything off in, in the pot. Let's get the center here just to add more butter. I, don't, I just don't think I need it. Anyway, give those just a quick saute. There we go. We've got our all-purpose flour. Again, equal parts. You can measure it out. I'm gonna eyeball it. And I'm gonna show you real quick what we're what we're looking for. Okay. Uh, your pan's gonna start looking dry really quickly that flour is absorbing all that butter. But there's, there's three different stages when it comes to actually making a roux. Okay, there's what's called a, uh, the, the blonde stage. Sorry, I'm screwing that up. Because uh, it's, it's been a minute and I don't really have the time to be able to redo this. So there's going to be the first stage, which is like the white roux. So right now would be considered the white roux. Everything's been brought together. We're going to start adding our stock. Okay. Then there's going to be the blonde roux. So the flour actually starts changing color a little bit as it's being heated up. It actually gets that blonde-ish yellow color to it. Okay. And that's really the stage that we're looking at when we're building our velouté. The white roux is going to be for your bechamel. So what's a white bechamel? Okay. Instead of the stock, it's going to be with milk. That's what you're going to use for your macaroni and cheese at home. I think we should make some macaroni and cheese one of these days. Okay? Definitely one of the, one of the fan favorites. Uh, and then the third one is going to be your, your dark roux or your brown roux. That's for making dark sauces. So in essence, you're, you're caramelizing and browning that, that roux to be able to get that dark color to it. As you're doing that, what you're doing is you're, you're taking away some of the potency and the power out of the flour when it becomes for thickening. So if you're doing the gravy or um, a different type of brown sauce, you're going to want to use a little bit more. Okay, so the process is, is pretty quick. It doesn't take a long time for this to come together. Most of all of you have done this already anyway, so I'm not... Um, 
breaking any 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 secrets or anything along those lines. So that's going to be enough time to be able to get that kind of that yellow color. You can kind of see it just on the tip here. It's starting to turn a little bit of color. So next we're going to be adding our stock. Uh, by the power of video, I've got stock already made. Okay, um, I've already warmed it up. We want to add hot to hot. Okay, what it's going to do, it's going to make the thickening process happen quicker uh, and we'll be able to get work through it and get some of those lumps out. Uh, as you can see on the back end, where our stock is still going from episode number two. And as I said, I deconstructed our bird that we just went through and, and that bird is now in there adding even more awesomeness to that. So as you can see, I started off with a wooden spoon. Okay, whenever we're putting a sauce together, we're going to transfer now to a wire whisk. Well, why, why would we use a wire whisk? I don't, I don't understand it. Why are you getting more things dirty? It doesn't matter. I've got a, I'm the one cleaning it. Okay. What the whisk is going to do is actually going to start, it's going to start breaking up the roux. Okay. We don't want those flour lumps into it. When you take a spoonful or a mouthful of that sauce and there's a, a lump in it and it's full of flour, no bueno. Just, just tastes like garbage. Uh, and Chef will yell at you, right? So uh, I don't want Chef yelling at me. Wait, okay. uh, let's... That's me, right? Okay. So we're going to add a third of our stock in at a time. Okay. Uh, if you want to measure it out, you can. Nice sound. Roughly a third. And now we're going to vigorously whisk it. And as you take a look, it's already starting to come together. Okay. It happens pretty quick because we're using hot, hot stock. Okay. Hot roux. And as you see, it's really starting to form. So we're keep working it. Um, don't worry, it's not it's not gonna burn. Eventually it certainly will. But you can see as you're looking at it, you're all you can see is is all my veg in here. Okay. So that's at about the consistency that I'm looking for to start adding in uh, adding in some more of our stock. So there's roughly the second third. Great thing about savory cooking, it doesn't matter. Well, it, I suppose it does a little bit. Um, really, it comes down to when you do make mistakes in, in, in savory, it's, you have the ability to be able to fix it, right? So if I don't have enough stock, throw in some water, throw in some beer. I don't care what you put in. Uh, I do have more stock here that I can throw in if I haven't heated uh, enough up, right? So, um, but if you're cooking on your, with your recipes, then you're gonna have all your quantities that you're that you're gonna need, right? So, so that should work out just fine. Again, starting to come together nicely, vigorously whisking to ensure that those, those the roux and or we can refer to them as the, the flour clumps if that's any easier. Uh, again, when we're looking at it, all I can see is the veg, okay? and that's really that's that's what I want to see. I don't want to see a bunch of lumps. And a bunch of things going on there. Okay, so, so now that's come up pretty good, it's starting to thicken up. I'm going to add in the rest of my stock. I think my quantities are actually going to be pretty bang on, so that's exciting. Let that come together. We're on about a, a medium heat right now to bring everything to where to the consistency that we're looking for. Right now, it looks a little a little loose. That's okay. What's going to happen is we're going to let this sit on the stove now for about 40-45 minutes. Typically speaking, whenever we're cooking with flour, especially in, in the hot side with our roux, it takes 45 minutes for that, that taste of flour, kind of that pasty grittiness, we don't want that in our sauce. So we're going to be patient. So we're going to let it come up to a simmer, then we're going to drop the heat really, really low, and we'll just keep an eye on it. We'll keep stirring it around and, and have it thicken up to the consistency that we're looking for. And then at that point in time, we're gonna add in our peas, we're gonna add in our chicken, we're gonna season, <laughs> put more salt in here than you probably think you need, but that's one of our tricks in the kitchen. So all of that's gonna start coming together. Uh, while that's happening, I'm not gonna bore you with rolling out pastry because it sucks. And I'm gonna make a giant mess, that's okay. So that's where we're at. Howdy, howdy, back at it. Pastry, I always make a make a mess doing this. That's why I don't want to show you, and it's a complete waste of your time. You can buy pre-made shells, which work just fine. I bought pre-made dough, rolled it out. So I've got two pie pans here, 
but ready to go. Cute little one we'll throw in the freezer for a later date. Uh, and another one here. My, my old man lives downstairs with us. Uh, so every Sunday night we, we get together for a Sunday dinner. We watch a program uh, together as, as a family and, and, and have a nice meal. So that's why I'm filming this one and we're making dinner tonight. So like I said, our, our base, our, our velouté with all of our veg has been going now for about 45 minutes. So and that's what I was saying is let's, let's put the chicken in and the peas in towards the end because we don't, they don't need to cook, continue cooking. So all that chicken, a healthy amount of peas, and because we haven't gone through a seasoning process on this as of yet, you can see this is this really nice consistency. It's hearty, there's lots of chicken and veg. So good. We're gonna season now. And because there's a fair amount of volume in here, don't be hasty. Try not to overdo it. Obviously, it's almost impossible to take away, but to an extent, it, it is. It can be fixed if you over, over too much salt or a little bit too much pepper. You know, you can add a little bit of cream or a little bit of milk, a bit of water, bourbon. You get the idea. So we'll give it a taste test. Definitely coming along. We're gonna hit it with salt. Needs a little bit more. We're we'll taking into consideration that we're seasoning for the pastry as well. So we do want this to be, to have that sense of just a, a little bit too much seasoning because as we're biting into that pastry as well, we want that to be well balanced. There we go. Coming together nicely. Yes, I'm using the same spoon. Don't judge, don't care. Bam, there we go. That was a little, a little gassy, but I don't, yeah, yeah, I just brought that out, so whatever. Um, we're gonna let this cool down for a little bit. I don't wanna put our hot liquid into our pastry. The pastry's gonna turn to goo. You're not gonna have anything on the bottom. It's gonna be weird. So just gonna cool this down. Just gonna keep it off the stove for a little bit, and then we'll come back and we'll build. Remember I was telling you earlier about fresh herbs? Don't put them in until the very end. We've got uh, some curly parsley here that I'm just finishing up doing a little bit of chop chop on. And then you're gonna say, well, why are you gonna now use it and throw it in now? Well, the reason is, is because my mix, right, cooked out for the 45 minutes, okay? It's actually, I've had sitting down, sitting and, and cooling down on the table here for a little bit now. Uh, so it's basically at, at room temp. So the idea is to, now I finish it, the fresh parsley, isn't gonna to perfume too, too much right now because it's really not that hot. But what will happen is this, as I reheat it in the pastry and it's in the oven, that's where we're gonna get some of that, that extra flavor out of it. So uh, just just fin finishing a little, little chopping here. Um, looking forward to my dishwasher on Tuesday. Spent an hour in this, in this crap dealing with it. First world fucking problems, eh? That's exactly what that is. Quit my bitching, you know? Anyway. Parsley, done. Into the drink, beauty. Okay. Okay, in the meantime, I've rolled out the pastry. You can see that it's sitting in the pie pans in front of you. And I got little lids ready to rock and roll as well. These glasses, I tell you, nobody comments on playing with my glasses throughout this whole video. I'm gonna be shocked, eh? Anyway, new glasses are coming hopefully tomorrow morning. My old ones getting new, new lenses. I'm not gonna tell you they're progressives. I just told you they're progressives. Welcome to getting old. Okay, pie pan, good to go. I did, I did put uh, a bit of butter down, paper towel, dusted it with a with, with some flour, so that way it doesn't stick. It'll get some of that, uh, the, the ability to brown up a little, and and it'll be nice. So uh, we're gonna take our absolutely ridiculously. Beautiful mix. Let's fill it up. Oh my god. Drool. Drool. Looks fantastic, yeah. 
so hearty. Lots of chicken, lots of beautiful veg. Super easy to make. I wasn't trying to edit these videos. I would have I would have mashed this down about an hour ago, right? Okay. So I'm gonna take my rolly pin. I'm gonna take the edge of my top and roll it onto my rolling pin. Okay. Me, she you know what this is all about, right? And put it on and then just roll, roll it through and screw it up. So that's great. So that's fine. We'll, we'll deal with that one. We're going to do the same with this other one. This time it's going to go on proper. There we go. There's the good one. We're going to hide the shitty one back in behind the pot so you guys can't see it. <laughs> So next I'm just going to make sure that our pastry is on here. Okay, just folding over the edges. What that does, it just allows the pastry to fall down. Okay, getting rid of some of those, those air pockets. Okay. I did cut it the rough size of the actual pie pan. Now I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to cut right along the edge of the glass of the pie pan. Okay. Roundy, roundy, round. Yank, yank, yank. And there we go. Okay, a little residual, no big deal. Next, we're going to do like a, a pinch form around the edges because we, we want it to stick. Should I have put some egg wash on there yet? Yeah, probably. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not worried about it right now. Before it goes in the oven, I, I will give it just a quick blast with, with egg wash. Egg wash is just a beaten egg with a bit of milk. A little brush. But we'll, we'll do that before it goes in the oven, yeah? So we're just gonna, we're gonna pinch, okay? So we're gonna take pastry and pinch. We're gonna go all the way around. So that's gonna help seal the edges. And it makes it look kind of pretty, right? Pretty is good, we eat with our eyes. So a little presentation of value. If I was actually making this, you know, in a, in a restaurant, probably not. Um, but if this is a meal to go that I would do for, for some of you actually working in the business, Right, We're, we'll take some of this and uh, we'll cut it out. We can make stars and moons and we can do all kinds of stuff to, de to decorate the top of it, right? Uh, I'm not gonna do that because I don't care. Uh, it's, it's not a big deal. It's Karen and I and my dad having dinner tonight. Uh, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put some holes in it uh, as, as we typically would in something like this. And what that does is just allows the moisture to, to steam out uh, and, and get that heat in there. So uh, there we go, chicken pot pie, looking awesome. Well, it's not actually ready yet, uh, but I am a couple kokanees down, which is totally fine. The chicken pot pie has been sitting in the fridge, uh, so it's it's come together a little bit nicer. It's ready to go in the oven. Oven's preheated 350. Again, hazarding a guess, 30, 35 minutes in the oven. Uh, we talked earlier about doing an egg wash. So I have already prepared the egg wash, one whole egg, a little bit of milk, cream, what, whatever you got, just to thin it out a little bit. We got our trusty little pastry brush here. And what we're just gonna do is we're just gonna lather it on the top, okay? Just a nice even layer all the way across, getting into the nooks and crannies. What this is gonna do, it's just gonna help with the browning process. Yes, it's gonna add a little bit of richness to it for sure, uh, which I never really complain about. So again, just a nice even layer. I don't know if you can tell, but this is the one that as I was doing, putting these together, this is the topper that I mucked up on. So you can see that it looks like it has a little smiley face. So I'm just going with a happy smiley face, right? That's what we're gonna do. So, uh, so this is it, okay. Nicely lathered in our egg wash. Again, preheated 350. Set the timer, don't set the timer. Makes no difference to me. Almost dinner time. Anybody that knows me working in the kitchen, these are bullshit. Uh, but I, I don't have rags. I don't have all the things that I would typically have. Uh, these are our, our Christmas mitts uh, that, that we actually have them taken back downstairs and replace them with the exact same gray ones. Okay? So, dinner. Done. Chicken pot pie. Nice golden color. Looking beautiful. The smiley face one that I screwed up earlier. Dinner. Dinner served.
You can let it settle a little bit, cut it into wedges if you want. We're probably just going to get dirty into it, scoop out a bunch of it, throw it on a plate, and just put it down. Okay? So there we go. That's episode number three. We're all done. I'm going to sign out. Stay safe. And thanks for joining me.